إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدًا عبده ورسوله وصفيه خليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله به الغمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يقول الله تعالى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد we praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى we glorify him we seek his help and his assistance we seek his forgiveness and his pardon and we send our salah and salam on his messenger his final messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah, Mar- Surah Maryam, he mentions uh, Prophet Yahya and mentions a few qualities about Prophet Yahya. Ya Yahya khul kitab bi quwa wa atainahu al hukma sabiyya. And he mentions a few qualities of Yahya, and at the end of that uh, group of verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Yahya, wa salamun alayhi, yawma wurida, wa yawma yamutu. And peace be upon him, peace be upon Yahya, the day that he was born, and the day that he dies, and the day that he will be resurrected back to life again. And then later on the surah continues talking about Maryam السلام, and her son, Isa السلام, and Allah mentions the story of the birth of Isa, and then at the end of this passage, Allah brings a similar verse about Isa. Quoting Isa alayhi salam as he says, وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيَّ يَوْمَ وُلِدْتُ وَيَوْمَ أَمُوتُ وَيَوْمَ أُبْعَثُ حَيَّ And peace be upon me, the day that I was born, and the day that I die, and the day that I will be resurrected and brought back to life again. So in both of these verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions three days. Three days. What is the significance of these days? These are the three most important days and most significant days of your existence. The day you are born and the day that you die, and the day that you will come back to life again. And all of us will pass through these three days. We, will, we, are, we have all been born, we will all die, and we will all come back to life once again. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described uh, in detail the process of the first day, how a person comes into this life. So before a person comes out of the womb of their mother, there is a process, uh, and this process, before this process, a human being was nothing. Allah says, and we created you, or I created you before from, and you were nothing before that. You were absolutely nothing before that. And Allah says in another verse, Has it not occurred to mankind that at one point they were something that was not mentioned? You were something that was not even talked about or mentioned, you had no existence whatsoever. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you. And this process of creation is mentioned in detail. Uh, in the Quran, it's also mentioned in the hadith. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal nas, in kuntum fi raybi min al ba'thi, fa inna khalaqanakum min turab. O oh, mankind, if you are in doubt about the resurrection, then know that Allah has created you, we have created you from turab first from dust. And this is the original creation of our fa- father Adam alayhi salam. The inna khalaqanakum min turab, thumma min nutfa. And then you become 
a nutfa, a drop of sperm. Thumma min alaqa. And then a person becomes a clot of blood. Thumma min mudha. And then you become a piece of flesh. A piece of flesh. Mukhallaqa. A fully formed piece of flesh. And, those, and that is for those of us who have come out alive, breathing, healthy. A fully formed piece of flesh. And then there are some who are born, but they're not alive when they're born. Abortion, stillborn, people who uh, the fetus is not fully developed and they come out without life. So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can show you His strength and power. And we cause you uh, to be settled in the womb of your mother for an appointed term. And then we bring you out as a baby. Then we bring you out as a baby. And then you attain your prime. And some of us, we die young. We die young. And some of us, we live until old age. Senile old age. Some people die young. Some people live until very old age. So a person who reaches that old senile age, they become to the point where they no longer know or no longer have knowledge after having knowledge. And they come to the point where they are as if they are a baby coming out of the womb, not knowing anything. So this is the process that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in the Quran before we are born. And in the hadith, Rasulullah says, uh, about how we are created in that each one of you you are gathered in the womb of your mother uh, as a drop of sperm for 40 days and then you are or the, the person becomes a clot of blood after that for a, a period like that 40 days and then the person is a piece of flesh after that and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the uh, angel. Uh, he sends the angel. الملك, and the angel is sent. الروح, and the angel blows the soul into the body. So as Muslims we believe that life does not begin at birth. Life begins when you are in the womb of your mother. When the angel comes and he blows the soul into the body either after 40 days or after 120 days depending on how uh, the scholars interpret this hadith. And the angel, not only does he blow the soul, but he also is commanded to write down four things. And this angel is commanded to write down four things. He's commanded to write the sustenance of that person from the beginning of his life until the end. And his lifespan, how long that person will live. And his deeds, what this person will do. And whether that person will be happy or wretched. Whether that person will be happy or wretched in this life. So these things are mentioned in the Quran and the Hadith, that process that occurs before birth. And this process, and talking about this process, is meant to humble us as human beings. To know that this is where we came from. We began as a clot, or began as a drop of fluid. A small, insignificant drop of fluid. Anybody who is prideful or arrogant needs to look at their origins. Where did you come from? And there's a saying that it says, Mali ibn Adam wal fakhr. Why, why should a, the son of Adam have any pride, any arrogance? What is there to be proud and arrogant about? Awaluhu nutfa. His beginning is a, a drop of fluid. Wa akhiruhu jifa. And his end is a rotting piece of uh, flesh, a rotting body, a rotting corpse. This is how you began, and that's how you will end. So what is there to be arrogant about? What is there to be proud about? And then, after this process, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extracts us from the wombs of our mother. Allah extracts us from the wombs of our mother. Uh, and this is the beginning of life, as we know it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu akhrajakum min mutuni ummahatikum. Allah has extracted you and brought you out from the wombs of your mothers. La ta'alamuna shay'an. You don't know anything. And then afterwards, He gives us life and He gives us knowledge. <coughs> and on this day, when we come out from the wombs of our mothers, this is the day that we incur a debt that we will never be able to pay back. You incur a debt 
that you will never be able to pay back. And that is the debt that you owe to your mother who brought you out into this life after having bore you in her womb for months and then given birth to you with difficulty. She bore you in her womb for a period of time in difficulty. And then she gave birth to you in difficulty. This is a debt that you incur that you'll never be able to pay back, no matter what you do. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, he once saw a man, and this man was making tawaf around the Kaaba, and he was physically carrying his mother on his back. Physically carrying his mother on his back. And he said to Abdullah, Abdullah ibn Umar, he asked Abdullah ibn Umar, have I repaid my debt to her? I'm carrying her on my back. I'm making tawaf with her on my back. Have I repaid my debt to her? Abdullah ibn Umar said to her, or he said to him, you have not even repaid one contraction. What are you talking about? You haven't even done one contraction repaid that. You'll never be able to repay your mother for the sacrifices she made in just bringing you out into the world. We come out into this world with a clean slate, with a blank sheet of paper. No sins, but no deeds either, no good deeds. No original sin. As Muslims, we don't believe in something called original sin. This is something the Christians believe. They believe that when every person is born, and he inherits the sin of his father Adam, when Adam committed the original sin. And they say that every human being comes out in this world inheriting that sin. And so they believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Isa to die for the sins that they incurred from their, or they inherited from their father Adam. As Muslims, we don't believe in this. No, no person will bear the burden of somebody else. No one bears the burden of anybody else. Your sins are your sins. The sins of your father are the sins of your father. The sins of your forefathers are the sins of your forefathers. Nobody bears the sins of another person. So you come out, clean slate, blank sheet, and this is the beginning of shaitan's enmity towards you. Allah says about shaitan, inna shaitan lakum adu. Shaitan is an enemy to you. فَاتَّخِذُوهُ adua. So take him as an enemy. And this enmity between the shaitan and you begins right at the beginning, right at the beginning of birth. And the shaitan wastes no time. And he stays with you until the end. As it comes in the hadith, مَا مِن بَنِي آدَمْ مَوْلُودٌ إِلَّا يَمَسُهُ الشَّيْطَانِ There is no child who is born except that the shaitan comes and he pricks that child. حين يولد فيستهل صارخا and when the shaitan pricks that child then the child begins to cry the child begins to cry and the only exception mentioned in the hadith is that of Isa alayhi salam and his mother Isa alayhi salam and his mother were spared from this prick of the shaitan everybody else undergoes this prick of shaitan so we come out from the wounds of our mothers and then we live our lives and as the verse mentions some people die young some people die young and some people reach ripe old age. But no matter what, when, when you die, whether you die as soon as you come out of the womb, or you live a few years, or you live 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, 60 years, 100 years, no matter what your lifespan is, we all know that you will die, and everyone will die. And this is a undisputed fact that any person with intellect understands and realizes that every person will die. كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ Every person, every soul shall taste death. And this will come at a precise time. And this time will not be moved forward even one second. And it will not be delayed even one second. And this has already been written. As we mentioned in the hadith, the angel comes and he writes down these four things. Amongst them is your lifespan. has already been written and decreed. And when a person dies, this is not an easy moment. This is not an easy moment. This is a period of trial and test. And Rasulullah himself underwent the trials and test of death. As he was himself وسلم, on the deathbed, he said, La ilaha illallah inna lil maut sakrat. That he, 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 he bore witness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship. And then he informed us that indeed death has, it has its pangs, it has the test, and it has trials and tribulations when a person is dying. It's not an easy time for the soul to be taken out from the body. So death has, it has trials and its tribulations and everyone will undergo that. It might be easier for some than others, but death has trials and tribulations. 
And as a person reaches that final day and those final moments, then this is also the last opportunity for the shaitan. The shaitan has his last opportunity to misguide you. He began his enmity with you from birth. And he will remain with you until your very end. And at the very end, this will be the last opportunity for shaitan. And he will try to test you. And he will try to prevent you from saying the shahada. And he will try to prevent you from dying on la ilaha illallah. And this is why we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a good end. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a good end. To allow us to say la ilaha illallah before we die. Because this is not as easy as it seems. It's not as easy as it seems. And those who have witnessed people dying know that there are some people who are not able to say and utter the shahada. It is not as easy as it seems. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us firmness at the time of death and allow us to, to say the shahada before we, we pass away. It's mentioned uh, that Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, Imam Ahmad, the great Imam uh, of fiqh and hadith, that as he was on his deathbed, he was going in and out of consciousness. He was going in and out of consciousness. And his son was with him at his deathbed. And as he was going in and out of consciousness, his son heard him saying, no, no, not yet. No, no, not yet. And his son became worried because the apparent meaning of this is that he's not ready to leave this world. Meaning that it seems as though he is attached to this world and he's afraid of going on to the next world. And so his son became worried. How could my father, Imam Ahmed, the scholar of hadith, the scholar of fiqh, how could he be scared and afraid to leave this world? And he was saying, no, not yet. So his son became worried. He's afraid that his father is going to have a bad end. He's not going to die in a way that we would all like to die. And his father, Imam Ahmed, after that he regained his consciousness and he came back to his senses. And his son asked him, I heard you saying not yet. No, not yet. Why, are you, why were you saying that? And Imam Ahmed said that the shaitan, he came to me. And he told me that you have escaped from my, my grip. Oh, Ahmed, you have succeeded, you have won, you have succeeded, you have escaped from me. And Imam Ahmed saying, uh, said that I was saying to the shaitan, no, not yet, not yet. It's not until you finally leave, your soul departs the body, this is when you are fully safe from the shaitan and his whisperings and his uh, fitna. So Imam Ahmed was saying, no, not yet. So uh, he realized that this is also from the tricks of the shaitan, to make you think that you are safe and secure, and make you think that you, you don't need to say the shahada, that you're dying upon Iman. And this is what he was trying to uh, trick Imam Ahmed with, and Imam Ahmed was not tricked by that. So when a person dies, <coughs> they enter into a new life. Al-Hayat al the uh, life of the grave, the life of the grave. And this is a life that is in between Darul Amal and Darul Jaza. So we are in this worldly life, this is Darul Amal, this is the abode of deeds. This is where you perform your deeds, good or bad. And Darul Jaza is the next life where you, where you will receive the recompense for those deeds, either punishment or reward. In between that is a intermediate station. And as you enter that intermediate station, there are also tests and there are also trials. And each one of us is going to be tested in the grave. And the angels will come and ask questions. And just like saying the shahada before death, answering these questions is not as easy as it seems either. Answering these questions is not as easy as it seems. And we will be tested in the grave, and this will be a major test, a major test and trial. As it comes in the hadith, hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari, Rasulullah says in the hadith, وَلَقَدْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيَّ أَنَّكُمْ تُفْتَنُونَ فِي قُبُورِكُمْ That it has been revealed to me that you will be tested in your graves. You will be tested in your graves. مِثْلَ أَوْ قَرِيبًا مِنْ فِتْنَةِ الْمَسِيحِ الدَّجَّالِ That you will be tested in your grave equal or very close to the test and trial and fitna of the false messiah, the fitna of the Masih al-Dajjal. And about the Masih al-Dajjal, the Antichrist, anti anti Rasulullah anti says that there is no fitna from the time of Adam salam until the end of the world, no fitna greater than the trial and fitna of the false messiah, the Antichrist, Al-Masih al-Dajjal. Rasulullah says in the hadith that you will be tested just similar or very close to the fitna that 
will occur when the Masih Dajjal comes out. When he comes out and the fitna and uh, corruption that he will spread, not all of us will be exposed to this fitna. Only those who are present at that time will be exposed to the fitna of al Masih Dajjal. However, every one of us will be exposed to the fitna of the grave. And this will be similar or very close to the fitna of al Dajjal. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for protection from the trials of life and death. And this is something that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised us, encourage us to seek refuge in Allah from. At the end of our salah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, when you finish from your tashahud, then seek refuge in Allah from four things. Seek refuge in Allah, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min a'adhabi jahannam. Seek refuge in Allah from the, from the punishment of the hellfire. Wa min a'adhab al-qabr, and from the punishment of the grave. Wa min fitnat al-mahya wal mamat, and seek refuge in Allah from the trials of life and the trials of death. Wa min sharri fitnat al-masih al-dajjal, and seek refuge in Allah from the trial of the false messiah, the antichrist, al-masih al-dajjal. So this is something I highly encourage inside of the salah and outside of the salah for us or ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from the trials of life and death and from the trials of the grave and from the punishment of the hellfire. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a good end. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to say the shahada before death and to save us from the trials of life and death and save us from the trials of the grave and the punishment of the hellfire. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. The first two days that we mentioned, the day of your birth and the day of your death, no one disputes this. No one disputes these two days. We are, we've all been born, so this is something that cannot possibly be disputed, and we will all pass away, we will all die. Nobody disputes that. As for the third day, the day in which we will be resurrected, this is where people begin to differ. And some believe, and others do not. Allah says in Surah Naba, what are they asking about? They are asking about the great event. Upon which they are differing, and they are uh, debating, and some of them are believing that there will be a last day and a resurrection, and some of them are denying. So some people believe, Others don't. Mankind, the disbelieving, this disbeliever, he says, When I die, will I come back to life? Does mankind not remember that we created him from before when he was nothing? So some people are in disbelief, others are believers. Whether they disbelieve or not, this day will come, the day in which you will be resurrected and come back to life. And on this day, everything will come out. Everything, all the secrets will be revealed. Everything that you did, you will see the result of it. Whoever does a Adam's worth of good, they will see it. Whoever does an Adam's worth of evil, they will see it. There will be reward and there will be punishment. And this is when real life will begin. This is when real life will begin. What we are in is life, but it's not the real life. Because life is something coming back to what is living. If you die after living, then this is not real life. The real life is when you do not die after, when there is no death after. This is the real life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about this, وَإِنَّ الدَّارُ الْآخِرَةُ لَهِيَ الْحَيَوَانِ That the, the next life, that is the real life. That is the real life because that life, there is no death. As for this life, there is death after. So it is temporary life, but it's not real life. But real life is when there is no death after. So when you are resurrected, this is when real life begins. As for now, then this is temporary life. And most people do not realize this. As it comes, uh, there's a saying from Ali radiallahu an that people are sleeping. And nasu niyam, people are sleeping. فَإِذَا مَاتُوا intabahu, And when they die and resurrected afterwards, then this is when they actually wake up. This is when you wake up and you realize that what you were living before was not the real life. And the real life begins when you are resurrected and 
your soul is coming back to your body and the Jannah is in front of you and Jahannam is in front of you and there's everlasting, everlasting life, this is when the real life begins. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, allow us to meet him on this day and he is pleased with us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill our scales heavy on the day of judgment with good, primarily iman in him and then good deeds. There is a hadith narrated from Aisha radiallahu anha where she says that من أحب لقاء الله whoever loves to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala أحب الله لقاءه then Allah will love to meet that person. And whoever hates to meet Allah then Allah will hate to meet that person. Aisha radiallahu anha she says that Oh, Messenger of Allah, we all hate death. We all hate death. So how can somebody love to meet Allah, but at the same time we hate death? And Rasulullah some answered, he said that when a believer is told of the rewards and the pleasures that await for him in the next life, then he will want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he will long to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the meaning of wanting to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the day we meet him the best of our days. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us firm on la ilaha illallah until death. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to say the shahada as the last thing we say before dying. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa turhamna lanakunanna minal khasirin. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta al-samiyu al-alim wa tuba alayna innaka anta al-tawab al-rahim. لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنا من الظالمين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرض المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرض المسلمين اللهم ارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين اللهم ارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم إنا نسألك العافية في الدنيا والآخرة اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداء الدين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر إخوان المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم انصر إخوان المستضعفين في غزة وفلسطين اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في غزة وفلسطين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد إن الله يأمركم العدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فذكر الله يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر الله يعلم ما تصنعون قيم الصلاة